All right, we are back again. I'm Quincy191. We'll be casting a fourth game total. This is, this is the fourth game. Fourth game I've done. It's been a while since I've done one, and I'm back doing more. Okay, this is the uh, NASL Season Two Heroes of New Earth show matches. Game one between MSI and OK, two very famous teams, probably the two best European teams. And, uh, as I've said before, these games were played nearly nine months ago now, so I'm just getting them because their replays are available online, and they hadn't been casted, so I figured, hey, maybe somebody wants to watch them. And I really hope that you do, because otherwise I'm going to be sad and lonely. Um, and interestingly, actually, both of these teams do not exist anymore. Uh, MSI moved over to Dota 2, and they are not playing. Well, actually they moved over in stages somewhat. Their team blew up and then they made a new team and they moved over and uh, the sponsor for Online Kingdom dropped them and they stayed together as smack tricks for about 10 seconds and then they decided to disband. So it's too bad for the Han scene. Two, two really good European teams that decided to call it quits, but we still have their history here preserved. In any case, um, Bands are finished. We've got Rhapsody, Polywog Priest, uh, Nymphora, Plague Rider, Hellbringer, Dragon. Torturer, and Magmus and Pharaoh. Nothing crazy. Mostly int heroes. In particular, two Electrician. strong supports in Nymphora and Rhapsody. Silhouette. And uh, probably, I think, one of the best support players and the heroes in the game, uh, Plague Rider who has excellent lane presence and just a fantastic ultimate. Tundra. As opposed to say Glacis, who's got like two useful abilities. Three, I guess, if you count the aura, which is good, but a lot of players don't even level it. So. And then they rush through that whole thing, in the, uh, rush through the whole picking stage. And, as they were commenting, said, Oh, look how fast everything went. So, that bands were very interesting. That gives us plenty of time to look at the picks. And the picks are Tempest, Master of Arms, Accursed, Silhouette, and Tundra on the Legion side. Again, nothing too crazy. Master of Arms isn't seen that often in the competitive scene. But, personally, I think he's a fantastic hero. Incredibly versatile. He's got, um... A stun and a slow in his blue form, and some AoE de-armor and damage, as well as a knockback in his red form, and he's got the uh, shield and the speed increase, and that cast increases blue. Just a lot of abilities, and uh, he, you know, gets picked up a fair amount. It's not like he's never seen, but he's not one of the more common heroes. Um, and other than that, I guess the other big pickup is Accursed. Usually don't see him, at least not as a primary hard support. You'll sometimes see him as a semi-support type hero. Um, but uh, he's, you know, another useful player. The um, shield and the cauterize nuke are obviously quite helpful, and the ultimate prevents him from dying quite a lot. Um, I don't like him so much because his cast time tends to be fairly long on both the shield and the cauterize. And so I've, I've seriously had people die before because he has to swing his whole sword around before the shield will go off and that's, you know, kind of a, a bit too long in my opinion compared to other things like Dsham's healing wave uh, that seems to go off pretty much immediately. And, you know, but Whatever. Uh, this is, I have noticed in these show matches that they don't typically pick, you know, so to speak, real lineups. They, they do a little bit more experimenting than you would normally see, which makes sense because these games don't mean anything. So it's a good opportunity to First of many. miss the bloodlust. And there goes Trixie. It's rewind. And apparently Trixie was very unhappy about 
the NASL. But we had a two three-man gank down here, I think. Yeah, and Ophelia got a Minotaur, which was probably what set that up. And it looks like they're gonna open with the Minotaur. Oh, yeah, she's screwed. Waveform and Comet stun and Minotaur stun, and she's just first of many. So. That's nothing much she could have done about that. Obviously, starting out with her level solo, she doesn't have tree grapple to get herself out of there. Um, it's a, you know, obviously a typical build. You do not want to start with that ability, but it does mean you don't get your escape mechanism. And she was hurt a little bit by a curse roaming to middle. And now it looks like Andromeda and Ophelia might set up a gank on mid, but they're going to find a little more than they bargained for with Tempest and Maw. Um, so, Silhouette's the other interesting hero on the Legion side, usually played by No-Tail, probably the best Silhouette player. And a Curse is going to run into both Andromeda and Ophelia, comes up coming out, and, uh, shields protects them from damage, the Minotaur is not going to be able to get in range of stun. So nothing's going to happen there. Yeah, <laughs> even Nova's commenting on the failure to micro the Minotaur. Um, Anyway, uh, Trixie's playing that still a lot, which is a little surprising because it's almost always no tails hero, but again, this is a show match, doesn't mean anything, so that's really why that's happening. Trixie getting a little experience on Silhouette, who probably is one of the most powerful range carries, even if not the most powerful. Um, and no tail in particular just absolutely dominates with that hero. I've seen several games where he gets completely shut down in the early game, and it doesn't matter. He's just so good at farming, he comes back with a null stone, you know, at 25 That's minutes, and just destroys everybody as they miss another kill up in the top lane as uh, Tundra and Tempest take out Electrician. Um, that's enough for the Legion lineup then. Let's go over to Hellborn. And they are running Soul Stealer, Andromeda, Electrician, Kraken, and Ophelia. Uh, one of my favorite player hero combinations is uh, Ake on that Ophelia. I think he's the best Ophelia player I've ever seen. Um, he's got... Uh, obviously, no, I haven't seen too much Ophelia because she's not that popular. Uh, but he's got incredible micro ability. Uh, he's, he's just really good at stacking stuns and, and using the abilities of those... Uh, creeps and doing doing little things like in the beginning getting stunning creeps and uh, you know the Catman and the slow from or sorry the slow from the Catman and the stun from the Minotaur and then at later game doing things like getting the Wolf Commander that gives that three percent bonus base damage that can uh, just massively up a carry's damage or um, the uh, vagabonds that give you increased move speed have uh, active slows those are those are fun. Um, so there's there's some strategy there if you haven't played Ophelia a lot in choosing which uh, uh, neutral creep to take over. And then depending on what phase of the game you're in, early game you do want those stunners, vagabond leaders even, which is uh, uh, isn't a stunner but is the most powerful uh, neutral creep. And then later game you get those things that will massively buff your carries damage. Uh, other than that, electrician. And then another, again, another hero that you see all that often is Kraken instead of Torn on Silhouette. But uh, very powerful, one of the strongest tanks. Uh, his electric shield gives him extra health at the cost of mana, and the more mana he gets, the more shield absorption is done. Looks like there's going to be a gank coming in here of Tempest and Tundra, and here comes the stun in a second from Tempest. And there's the stun, and... There's the nuke from Tundra as Electrician tries to grip Tempest and gets an elemental from Ophelia, but it's not going to matter, it's just too much damage coming out from those elementals. So nice, nice clean kill on uh, Powzilla from Tundra and Tempest. Uh, let's see, it's nothing, nothing else too crazy going on on that Hellborn team. Uh, Kraken's a little non-typical for them. It's again typically an MSI hero that Trixie likes to run a lot. Just absolutely dominant. One of the best heroes in the game too. Uh, his splash auto attack gives him 
incredible last inning ability early on, and then uh, he manages to get just stupidly tanky, and the ultimate does gives him a lot of presence in team fights and the torrent charge give him a good ability to pick off individual heroes. So he has a lot of utility both early and late game. Jalaran, very, very strong hero. Uh, Soul Stealer and Andromeda, of course, very typical pickups. Andromeda, one of the more common support heroes, and Soul Stealer, one of the more common uh, carries, as I miss more kills. In the top lane, <laughs> trade uh, Fresh Pro. Let's see, Tundra for uh, Ophelia. It's probably a trade they'll take. Tundra is going to have more presence than Ophelia typically. Uh, playing semi support as uh, compared to Tundra's, you know, ganker role. So a fair bit of action going on here in the in the early game, and there's no way that those are right. There we go. Yeah, those are totals, not advantages. <laughs> like, there's no way that. MSI already has a 10k gold lead in experience. Like they're, they're good, but they're not that good. Let's, let's face it. <laughs> and it, at the very least, Online Kingdom is not that bad. Uh, but other than the occasional kill, not too much going on here. We have less than a kill a minute, which is... It's still the early game, but that's typical of a slower game, more of a sit-back-and-farm pace right now, not too much gank in the And as a consequence, I don't have that much to say as a comic the sun comes on Silhouette, and Tundra pops his ultimate, and Silhouette's going to die very quickly, as there's nothing a curse can do. Although he has his shield and his nuke, he's only level 2, so each one of those is level 1, and there's just not enough damage absorption, because Kraken's already level 7. And speaking of which, Kraken has just finished his Helm of the Black Legion. Presumably helped along by that kill on Silhouette. Complaints lag. We're not players here, obviously. We don't care about that because this is a replay. Although you can see how it would affect their uh, play. Uh, overall, though, no tail in the middle, doing a very good job in terms of farming experience and gold, as you would expect. He's one of the most dominant mid players at 322 gold per minute. Uh, Tempest, fly on Tempest, second highest farmer on the Legion team, 264, primary jungle hero, he's come out for a couple of successful ganks, and that's really boosted his farming capability, but he, as I said before, he is um, one of the, not not in this cast, but in previous ones, uh, he is one of the best jungle farmers due to his ability to uh, immediately kill one creep with the uh, spawn minions, and then do a whole bunch of other creep killing because he gets uh, extra spawns off that and he doesn't have to ever actually put himself in danger and it's it's quite nice. In particular with a couple of mana pots he can just, you know, stay in the jungle for a really long time as Electrician and Kraken go after Silhouette again and that's just gonna destroy her with the grip and ultimate coming out again from Kraken. It's surprising that now it's back up again. This is a reasonably short cooldown, but it did seem like they just used it. And Andromeda is trying to chase Tempest down, which is a terrible idea because she's level 3. And he's level 7, and he has a level 9 Master of Arms coming to support, and now she's going to die because here comes the stun, and there's Moa. Yep. And there's no, no Smackdown because it was Fly that put it on. So, Magics, that was some terrible decision making right there. I'm sorry, but you. <laughs> that guy was more than twice your level. Not not, not a good decision. And right here, the Crow coming out giving vision. This is one of the reasons that Tundra's picked up, is because he has the ultimate on Kraken, and it's not going to be enough because he's got charge. Well, he doesn't have mana for it, but he's just too tanky to 
to go down there. Ah, uh, the crow, you know, gives so much vision. That's one of the main reasons to pick Tundra. He's got strong abilities otherwise, especially the curl, uh, giving that movement slow and the jump uh, from his cold shoulder and his ultimate obviously being a powerful skill. But really, in these higher level games, uh, I've heard it said so many times that it's really the shiver that does most of the work on that hero. Uh, the ability to have that much vision on a microable unit that you, know, you can fly away from a hero, put it wherever you want. Um, it, it's incredibly important. It's why, you know, you kind of have one of these Serial heroes. Killer. As I miss Electrician taking out uh, Trixie again. He's now 0-4-0 oh, and oh, just absolutely getting rocked in the early The game. Legion have destroyed a Hellborn Tower. But that should help his GPM a little bit with the tower kill in the middle. And a random ultimate from Ophelia. Because there's action going on in the middle as Tempest gets taken out by Soul Stealer Demon Hands. And uh, stun on Kraken, but that's not going to matter. Because he does have Mystic Vestments and the Black uh, Hell of the Black Legion already. So he doesn't really care about your stupid stuns. An electrician and Ophelia are going to take down this tower up here tower. thanks to her minions. Um, Ophelia is funny, obviously, really is a really strong tower pusher with the ability to take over those creeps and add them to the push. And that can add quite a bit of damage to your tower killing ability. Anyway, as I was saying, you know, one of the big reasons Tundra is a good hero is because of that um, cor uh, the shiver, that the bird that flies over and gives vision. And, you know, you can see that the importance of vision in these games by the uh, fact that you know, they typically sacrifice an entire hero just to keep wards up. They're just saying, you know, alright, this, this guy is going to do what he can, but his big job is going to make sure that we can see things. And having the shiver, being able to act, have him act as like a fifth ward, a movable ward that doesn't cost any gold, that's that's pretty damn useful, I'd say. You know, maybe even help out that uh, support hero, allow him to buy a few rewards, maybe get a little bit more uh, items, and that can turn him from a, you know, carry feeder to a, a useful hero that can do things for your team, and that's always nice to have uh, an actually useful fifth hero instead of a completely crap one. It's a curse there's in a lane ward, but I'm pretty sure they saw him. And they at least know that there's some sort of shenanigans going on down here. As you see the port in from Soul Stealer. And he's got an illusion rune as Ake takes out <laughs> Trixie again. <laughs> so I guess there's a good reason why other people play as heroes. Kamasun and Torrent come out and then ultimate on the Tempest and he's just gonna melt. I'm not sure that ulti was necessary. Uh, Thunder's gonna throw out the Axis and the ultimate onto Soul Stealer. He picked the right one, which was which was good on him, but it's not gonna matter. Soul Stealer gets away with plenty of health. Ultimate probably wasn't necessary there for Tempest, but hey, why not? He's got it up. It's killing heroes. He kills some heroes. The Hellborn have destroyed and a Legion a tower. Second tower kill there for the Hellborn team. As they now take a 4k lead in both gold and experience, so they're, you know, fairly comfortably up in this game, but that may not matter that much. And <laughs> actually they're pushing the second tier tower up here on top, and they're gonna take the Hellborn have destroyed a Legion tower. Ophelia again showing the power of those uh, controlled creeps to kill some kill some towers, and I would imagine they're going to try to push middle next to get some more tower gold and uh, keep up this advantage, get themselves some map control, and try to continue to be aggressive, because they, they really kind of have to, because, um, you know, Silhouette is the hardest carry in this game, and she's going to get some support from both Master of Arms and Tundra. And the Hellborn team has some a, in particular tanking ability in both Electrician and Kraken, Electrician in particular, although Kraken is one of the more powerful tanks. Um, Watch your eyes. But uh, outside of Soul Stealer, not going to be able to do too much damage. Kraken's got solid damage output, but he's going to be more focused on building survivability in the early game. You know, he does, he does get beefy, I'm not trying to say that he can't kill things. Obviously, because he's shown us with a 3 on 2 record that he's quite capable of killing things. Aurora uh, comes out for vision, spotting that Mala. Watch your eyes. And we got a five man push coming up here in the middle tower. But, um, you know, Soul Sitter is going to be their main source of damage, and he's just not going to be able to compete with Silhouette in that regard. Um, so, 
master is throwing out some harassment here, trying to help. Actually, somebody's got a portal key. Stun coming out on Soul Weapon, that's the illusion. Slow hits Kraken, but he's just gonna shrug it off because he's got that vestments. Actually, a Shaman's Headdress now. Uh, Soul Seed is gonna be So we got five on the five here in the middle with uh, Kraken coming down here. And there's no rune, but there's gonna be spawning one. There it is, there's an illusion room bottom, and he's gonna walk right past it. Because Soul Stairs gonna come get it. And it looks like there's nothing nothing doing there in the middle lane after all, because Hellborn clearly wanted to take that tower, and uh, Legion were clearly not going to just let them have it as they let them have uh, two towers on the top. Um, so, you know. Light game is a bit of a question because Silhouette's got, you know, the strongest carry potential on the other hand, Soul Stealer's no sludge himself, and you know, will Maul and Tundra be able to uh, take out Electrician and Kraken? My first inclination is no. Um, but I, I still do think that the Hellborn team would prefer not to let the slug get to late game because they I'm sure they know how powerful Silhouette can be. So they're going to group up here again and try to make a push out of things. And Soul Steel use the illusions to take out some Tempest Elementals. And once again they back off as Trixie is quietly farming down here in the spot lane, which he needs to do because even after some alone time in the jungle and the lane, he's only up to 235 gold per minute. Conqueror attempt coming down here from Ophelia and Kraken. Yeah, it's, it's a little odd, but especially this early, but they're gonna be able to do it, it looks like. As Conqueror gets uh, de armored a little bit by Andromeda. Uh, it's reasonably surprising that they can kill him that fast, especially with uh, just those two heroes there, but. Now they've got all five joining the party, and he's gonna go down in a matter of seconds. Looks <laughs> like Tundra actually tried to snipe it with the axes, and is. No, oh, Electrician can't get in range of the grip. So, Soul Slayer picks up the token, which is apt because he doesn't have as much, quite as much survivability as uh, other heroes on his team. And with that said, it looks like a good time to go over some items here at the 20 minute mark. Solster, as we already said, has the portal key. He just picks up the ultimate orb. I would assume that's for Geometer's Bane. I don't really like the pickup, but I would prefer a Shrunken Head. On the other hand, the Hellbird team doesn't have too much damage. The issue is they've got three stuns, and I guess Thunder Stun is superior magic, so maybe the Shrunken wouldn't be quite so useful. Uh, Andromeda is probably the primary ward bitch, so she's got just the port power supplies, driders, major totem, minor totem, and now she doesn't have a port anymore because she's boarding bottom. Uh, electrician sitting on ghost marchers, teleport, combo block, legion power supply, and mystic vestments. Presumably that's going to be turned into a shaman's headdress as well. Like I was saying earlier, the Hellborn team doesn't have that much magic damage. They're mostly physical with uh, Silhouette and Master of Arms doing the primary damage there. Uh, and Tundra as well, actually. Looks like I can jump on crap uh, first here. And the swap coming out and stun. Uh, Microing from Ake on the minions and curse goes down very quickly. Support and Soul Stealer and that's is that the, uh, probably the correct. Ulti from Mo as he slows everybody with a very well placed. What's the bloody call? I don't even know. Fork Lightning. Sorry, I play a lot of Moa, but I just know it as the slow. Managed to hit everybody there and certainly saved the life of Tundra. Between that and the ultimate. So, back to farming we go. Um. Anyway, you know, the Shaman's Headdress, um, it's a strong item, it's not very expensive, and in particular you can build it piecewise, so, you know, you don't have to save up 2,000 gold before you can get something, you can build the 375 gold ring and the uh, 
950 piece is the most expensive bit, and that's even not very much. So it's kind of nice when you can get something like that and you know, get uh, side benefits of the item, uh, a little bit of regen, a little bit of armor, before you actually combine the whole thing. You have to build up a big pool of gold. On the other hand, um, not a lot of magic damage coming out from this uh, Hellborn team. They've got the axes from Tundra, a couple abilities from Moa, uh, and a curse Cauterize, but that's pretty much it. And that's like leading teams again having to defend that middle tower. So, I mean, the vestments is a $400, a 400 gold investment. I can absolutely say that that makes all sorts of sense. Um, going to the full shamans, it's not the craziest move in the world. Not so sure I would do it. Might have a bit of better time, particularly on Ellie, picking up some more mana. And he's sitting on 2200 gold right now, so it looks like that's what he's going to be doing. He could certainly finish off the shamans right now if he wanted to. And he's clearly cho not choosing that path. Uh, Kraken, though, did go for the shaman's headdress, as well as the Helm of the Black Legion, Logger's Hatchet. Excellent for last hitting, particularly in the early game. Very good item on him. I like it quite a bit. Uh, Power Dreads and Soul's Bulwark. So he is, without a doubt, the tankiest serial in this game right now. And the Legion are going to have a hell of a time killing him, even with Silhouette and Tempest Ultimate and the stuns they've got. He just, he regens so much health, and he's got the charge that can get him out of a lot of bad situations. And the ultimate, for that matter, if he's got a bunch of heroes chasing him, he puts that down, and it just is so much slowing, and he pulls you in, and stuns you when you hit the middle. So, uh, Kraken's gonna be just about impossible to kill at this point, if he has any team support at all. The only way they're gonna be able to get him is if they lock him down on probably a four or five man gank. And it looks like the Hellborn are finally going to push in this middle tower as there aren't enough Legion here to defend. Hellborn destroyed a Legion tower. With uh, Master of Arms and Silhouette elsewhere. There's really not enough damage for the Hellborn to the Legion to do anything. And there are five Hellborn heroes grouped up here looking to push the second tier tower and they might get it. And this is the where Legion the Legion needs to draw a line. It's great that Notel managed to get tier 1 tower down, but they just took a tier 2 tower. And it looks like there goes Silhouette uh, on top of their electrician grip and at least they're cracking. So I don't really agree with the decision from Notel. They're continuing to push the bottom tower while his mid tower was getting destroyed and his team primary carry was getting just absolutely wrecked. And now pushing the tier 3 tower and really not seeing too much resistance from the Legion side as Silhouette is down, but there's not like there's much she can do about it anyway. And they'll be trying to click the Kraken now, it doesn't matter. And it comes up with a big ultimate hitting two heroes, uh, both Andromeda and Electrician, and it's not going to matter too much because they focused Electrician. Souls in the meantime gets picked off, having to get the token. And the Hellmore team are in full retreat now, it comes simply after Andromeda, that's not going to save her life. Electrician's running away and he's Barely gonna make it and tries to pour it out and no! There's a stun coming up from Moa there that might have a hit, I'm not sure, but uh, Thunder gets the kill in any case. I don't think they needed the stun. They just killed him. So there's good, finally some good defense from MSI there, but you know, as you can see, they took out all three towers, in fact. It's like taking the base tower as well in one push. And that was not good, and now they're going to try to counter push. And they should get this tier 2 tower. They've got plenty of elementals up, illusions from Moa, and Silhouette's got a lot of damage. This tower is going to fall, but I seriously the doubt they can get anything else. And yep, they are. Tundra points out, and the rest of them spread like crazy, because here's Kraken. And as you saw in that last fight, you know, Kraken just refuses to die, because, you know, between the tanky, this general tankiness, he's also got Andromeda to swap him out of situations if he needs it. So it's, they're going to have a hell of a time trying to kill him on this uh, Legion team, and that speaks to all the time, all the times that they've picked him up and dominated with him and showed the rest of the competitive scene how good that hero really is. So really, it's it's your fault, MSI, and you should be ashamed. And <laughs> since we were talking about items, <laughs> so we're talking about five minutes ago. And, Kept getting interrupted by actual fights, so I'm, I'm very annoyed that all the stupid action has caused me to stop talking about items. Let's finish off with Ophelia, who's got uh, Blade of Greaves, Abyssal Skull, Shaman's Headdress, and the Astrolabe. 
Astrolabe makes ton of sense to play to Greaves as well because they both boost her minions. Abyssal Skull, kind of nice, but I mean, there are better auras. I would rather just go with the uh, Ring of the Teacher. Um, they don't really need the lifesteal aura on the creeps. It's useful, but I guess it's, it's, it's really not worth the money. And, you know, Ophelia, of course, doesn't get any of that lifesteal benefit being a ranged hero. And she did decide to complete a Shaman's Headdress, clearly going for survivability here. That's the only other reason to complete the, uh... I want to say Vladimir's Offering. And I just said it, too. Abyssal Skull. There you go. Um... And the other, re other reason to complete that is to get the extra regen from the Ring of Regeneration. Uh, so clearly she's going for the uh, tanky build between that and the Greaves and the Astrolabe. She's going to be fairly hard to take down, but on the other hand, she's Ophelia. You know, she doesn't really need to be, on the ultimate for that matter, she doesn't really need to be uh, absorbing a lot of damage. She's supposed to be microwing those minions, and it doesn't matter that much if she dies, because the minions' abilities, I think in the aggregate, are far more useful than hers. But, hey, whatever, it's a show match, nothing matters, might as well try out some crazy new stuff. Although, to be honest, I might have actually seen that build once before in a real game. Um, but let's go to the Legion side now, as we look at Tempest, who's got a Bottle, Power, Treads, Portal Key, Ring of the Teacher, and Port. Uh, 26 minutes in, 331 gold per minute, he's got 3400 saved up, so he's obviously going to be buying that Shrunken Head as a one-off. That's probably not a good idea. I mean, at least get the uh, Mighty Blade and the Club, 1600 Club now, let's call it. But for him, I'm playing too much Dota, sorry. <laughs> and and put him in your stash, you know, there's no reason to just be hanging around that much gold. I guess you could use it for buybacks and with the strong push, the Hellborn push in the mid, uh, middle base. You can see why he would, might want some buyback hold in their hand. You know, he's so close now, he might as well just buy the damn thing. But uh, 27 minutes in, Portal Key Shrunken Head, that's that's a pretty good time right there. Um, and the 340 gold per minute will reflect that. No-Tail is the strongest farmer on his team at 378. He is outclipsed in the game, er, he is eclipsed in the game by both uh, Soul Stealer and Kraken at 472 and 428 respectively. It's not surprising, of course, Soul Stealer is one of the stronger farmers with his demon hands, and Kraken's got that splash auto attack. Uh, but of course, you know, there's the massive amount of tower killing that's been going on on the Hellborn team as well. Nonetheless, uh, good farm from No-Tail, and he has got post-haste, a bottle, power supply, no fire blade, soul scream ring, and he just sold something and bought a soul's bulwark. And that's good. I mean, I suppose I can see the logic in that. I'm not a huge fan of post-haste on Master of Arms. But then again, I'm not a huge fan of post days in general, and No-Tail is. Of course, he gets them on Polywog quite often. Um, so that's probably just a difference in preference. I um, certainly can't sit here and say that No-Tail's build is wrong, because, you know, he's No-Tail. Um, but... And he's certainly using that post to support out quite a bit. It seems to be always on cooldown. Uh, the Null Fire Blade on Master of Arms is a very strong pickup. You switch over to that uh, red attack and it gives you massive attack speed and you can just drain mana from people. So you can combine that with the stun and slow from the blue form. And uh, and a team fight boom here is Kraken's ultimate coming out and the Tempest ultimate is coming out uh, but very, very quickly cancelled. Shrunken has pop here but he's just going to run away and auto attack as a massive Soul Stealer ultimate comes out and everybody on the Legion team melts. I'm sorry, there's a crap ton of action going on there at one point. <laughs> They're complaining about the lag some more. As Hellborn is going to use that uh, clear, clear team fight victory to take out Kongu and uh, Token on Kraken, so he just absolutely will not die now. Uh, between the tankiness and Andromeda and uh, uh, Token, he's just way too tanky. Uh, way too much damage eaten. Um, but, you know, Mullet's it's a fairly typical build to get the uh, Null Fire Blade. Soul's Brawl work, obviously a good item on pretty much any hero, so <coughs> there's no reason not to get it. 
Uh, he can benefit a little bit more from things like Savage Mace and Charged Hammer, but those are expensive and you can't get them as a shot. Stun comes out and he's draining back his mana as we speak, and so he can drain Thunder's going to initiate here on the Electrician with the ultimate and the charge. Uh, and the uh, axes, but so, uh, Solicitor pops the shrunken head and he's just putting out massive amounts of damage. And uh, Elliot attempts to board out, but he's not going to be successful. And now Kraken's running away, and he's going to use the token here as he finally realizes that and uh, stays the fight. Solstice just continues to sit on the periphery here and put in the damage. As Kraken's ultimate comes out one again, catching three heroes. Well, well, impressive place for the and that's going to manage to take out Tundra, as well as Tempest. And there's some serious misplays going on there in MSI's favor, as actually, our Soul Sitter's not done, he's going to take out Nova with the Demon Hands and the Portal Key. Uh, choosing to focus Electrician and Kraken at the expense of you know, Andromeda, Ophelia, and Soul Sitter, that made no sense, particularly with the token on Kraken. As a stun comes out onto um, Andromeda, and she's going to tap with herself over the cliff and barely survive. I mean, the Mile Master's in a lot of trouble, and he's going to take out with Demon Hands from Soul Stealer. That was an excellent tablet of command from Andromeda right there, pushing herself over the cliff. She otherwise absolutely would have died. As the Hellborn team cleans up the racks in the middle here, and it looks like they're going to try to just finish this game as uh, they're beating on this top tower, and Kraken doesn't even care. He's taking all the tower damage. And a nice knife that can get themselves some silhouette. And with that, they're going to back off as Snowtail is the only one dead left on the uh, Asian side, and they only have three heroes in the base for Hellborn. So, a very strong, successful push there. And it looks like Trixie might actually not be done. Try to chase down this Ophelia, but she's gonna get away because Kraken's here to support her. And that looks like it's it. But there's some serious misplays, like I said, going on there. Targeting Electrician and Kraken, especially with the Kraken, the token having a Kraken. Kraken having a token. That made absolutely no sense. You know, you don't focus the tanks and let Soul Stealer, a high DPS hero, just beat on you. That that's silly. That makes no sense. And that's yeah, a show match. They probably don't care. I'm sure they realize this game was mostly lost anyway with a 16k gold lead and a 15k experience lead on the part of the Hellborn. But hey, you know, you're playing. Why the hell not play? Just just play and and uh, try to win. And they are, but. I feel like that could have gone better than, than it went. Uh, nonetheless, though, the Hellborn obviously do have a substantial lead here, with strong advantages in both the Hel uh, gold and experience, and yes, being the Hellborn side, they've got a distinct advantage in that <laughs> category, and they've actually taken, taken advantage of it twice with uh, killing Concord. Um, finishing off the Legion's items, though, we got Silhouettes looking at power treads and a null stone and a power supply is your big items. Nothing crazy fancy there. Pretty decent timing on the null stone. She's up to 309 gold per minute and she's really managed to pick up her farm. Still lacking in the kills department, but hey, maybe. Um, and Tundra's got Graves, Helm of Black Legion, Sonic Headrest. So lots of tankiness coming out here from both sides. Um, in fact, Ophelia finished a barrier idol. Uh, it looks like we've got one, two, three. No, oh, sorry, one, two, three, yeah, three helms, uh, two, three headdresses if you count the idol, actually. Yeah, the, uh, three headdresses if you count the idol and the mystic vestments on the electrician. So this is a very tanky game with, uh, you know, not a lot of damage coming out from either side. Uh, Hani on the soul steel is probably doing the most damage, but, you know, even he's having trouble putting some guys away. As you saw in that last team fight, they just let him beat on people and he, he did not immediately clean up as soul stealers are want to do. Okay, so we got a four-man push coming in, five-man push actually, and goes in the back there. Under this top to, uh, lane. Tower's gone already, so they're just gonna be looking to take their axe, and they can pretty much sit here and force the Hellborn to sit there, uh, Legion to stay in their base, and actually double damage her in the Soul Stealer, and he's beating on these racks. And it looks like the Legion are just gonna be, okay, you can have them. There they go. It's like nobody wants to initiate here. Um, and they're just going to let him as uh, Ellie grips the Soul Stealer. So, uh, so I'm sorry. 
ships are coming out on her as well, and she might fly, but an excellent Tempest ultimate can be three players, and Andra finally swaps them out there, but Kraken ultimate hitting uh, both uh, Tundra and Tempest, and Grip coming out on the Master of Arms, and that's going to be Denatel's death. Uh, she pops the ult, and immediately when it wears off, he gets taken out, and that's going to be the game. So, a strong, strong victory here from Online Kingdom. I say. It's, uh, <laughs> Loda dies in the well to Silhouette trying to kill her. Oh, poor, poor Kraken. Had such a terrible game. Dying in the well. Can't even kill people. Nonetheless, very, very good showing here from Online Kingdom. I think towards the end, MSI was just like, alright, whatever, kill our racks. We don't care anymore. As you can see from there, uh, just ignoring Soul Stealer and you know allowing him to attack them while they tried to kill tanks, and then completely disregarding the fact that they were taking their top racks and refusing to initiate. I guess Tempest was waiting for a good opportunity, but that opportunity had to come before the racks went down. Um, but strong, strong showing from Online Kingdom, and they will take Game 1 of this uh, NASL Season 2 show match. So, Game 2 coming the up next. The 